Good morning and welcome to another podcast of Crumbs from God's Word. Today uh, we are in the book of Genesis again and uh, uh, we got about 20 more chapters to go, so we'll be here for another week or two. Genesis chapter 30 is uh, today's passage, Genesis chapter 31, verses 1 through 16, and then Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 through 23, and then we go over to Psalm chapter 12, verses 1 through 8, and Proverbs chapter 3, 13 to 15, and uh, let's go ahead and dive into today's lesson. Uh, looking in Genesis, we see uh, the continuance of the story of Jacob and his uh, wives, Rachel and Leah, and then his concubines, and, or their uh, handmaids, rather. And uh, God is blessing uh, as far as giving children. And again, like I said yesterday, I don't understand why this is uh, acceptable or anything like that. But this is the apparent plan of God uh, for the nation of Israel. And uh, maybe diversity uh, needed to be part of that as far as uh, the 12 tribes come out of Jacob. And we'll see that later on. But let's look at verse number 23. It says that she conceived and bare a son and said, God hath taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. Now, Joseph, he takes up a good portion of the book of Genesis and he is mentioned throughout the word of God. Uh, he is a picture of Jesus. And uh, as we learn in his life, we'll learn uh, the connections between Joseph and Jesus and how he is a picture of that. Uh, but I found it interesting that his name is Joseph and that it means God taketh away my reproach, uh, knowing that Joseph is a picture of Jesus and seeing how she says God takes away the reproach. That's exactly what Jesus does. In verse 27, it says, And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, uh, if I have found favor in thy eyes, tarry, for I learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. Laban is uh, continually trying to deceive Jacob. In verse 30, it says, For it was little which thou hast before I came. This is Jacob's response. And now increased unto a multitude, and the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. And now when shall I provide for my own house also? So again, these two men are starting to butt heads. And I mean, Jacob's been faithful. He, and that's basically what he's saying here is when I, I got here, you didn't have much, but now you are a wealthy man. And it's all because of me. It's all because of the grace of God on my life. And um, we, we continue to see that today, uh, how the Jewish people uh, seem to be have a, a special blessing upon God and things multiply uh, for them. Verse 37, and Jacob took him rods of green poplar and of the hazel and chestnut tree and uh, pilled wh white strakes in them and made the white appear which was in the rods. And he set the rods which he had pulled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering trough when the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle, ring strength, speckled and spotted. Uh, I read this. I read this many, many times. I have no idea how this uh, stick in the water made a difference. But he believed it did. And if there's someone out there that could tell me, hey, uh, there's actually something in there that does this, that would be cool because I have no idea. But sometimes we read God's word and we go, I have no idea what that means. But we still know that God's word is true and every man is a liar. And we just kind of read it and um, say, that's interesting. I, I need to learn more about that. Uh, looking at chapter verse uh, 31, or chapter 31, verse 7, it says, And your father deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. Uh, this is just Jacob reminding Rachel and Leah that their father had continually deceived. Verse 13, this is a, a, uh, a conversation between God and Jacob. In verse 13, it says, I am the God of Bethel, where thou uh, anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me, 
Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. Uh, so this is like, like God's stamp of approval. It's time to go. Uh, friends, uh, Jacob didn't have the best of life. He was constantly being deceived and uh, by, by his employer and by uh, the, his father-in-law there. But he stayed and he was faithful and, and he followed the Lord. And there's an important lesson in that uh, to stay where uh, God puts you. Matthew chapter 10, verse number 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Uh, a couple of things here, the calling of the twelve disciples, and they're listed below. And uh, it would be good to learn who they are and learn about their lives. And we'll do that as we go through the Gospels. Uh, but I wanted to show that it says he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. Friends, this was a gift that Jesus gave to the disciples for this period of time. It is not a gift that we still have today. And many uh, false religions and many false teachers claim that they can sit, uh, heal the sick and claim that they can cast out spirits, uh, but that's just not true. Uh, later in Scripture, we'll find out that uh, these were given for a sign, uh, but we have the complete word of God. They did not. We have the Holy Spirit. They did not. Uh, does God still heal? Yes. Does Jesus still heal? Yes. Can we still pray to God in his name? Yes. Can we still be relieved of diseases and such things? Yes, but not this way. And so that's important to see that that was a temporary thing uh, for that. Verse number six, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, again, uh, today we are told to go to the whole world. But these men were told to go to the lost sheep of Israel. And as we continue through the Old Testament, uh, you'll see how uh, they they loved God, they served the devil. They loved God, they served the devil. And there's this constant rotation of, of the Israelites and how they love God and then they serve the devil. And so that's why Jesus is saying they're lost and they need a shepherd. Verse 14, and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when you depart out shake off the dust of your feet. Uh, friends, that's very good advice. Even today, when we go and tell people about the Lord, if they're not interested, uh, then we need to leave them the gospel and move on and not get so offended because we are serving the Savior and not ourselves. Verse 16, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as dove. Again, more good advice as we are witnessing uh, to just be wise with what we are saying. Psalms chapter 12 today, verse number 6. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. And that is, uh, seven is the number of completion. It's uh, the number, it's a re often referred to uh, a heavenly number. And the word of God is pure and every man a liar, it can be trusted, and it can be uh, followed. And looking at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and that is the word of God, and the man that getteth understanding, that's digging in and, and uh, reading God's word until you understand it. For the merchandise is, uh, of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. Uh, when we read God's word and we apply it to our lives, uh, we receive more than you would by having precious silver and gold. And that is a pretty cool thing. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you on the next one.